Morning, Brendan. Morning. How old are you, Brendan? Seventeen. Where were you living on October 31st, 2005? With my mom. Where exactly? Where was that located? At 12930A Avery Road. What city is that in? Two Rivers. And how long have you lived at that address? Six or seven years. Now, there was others that live around you. Is that right? Yes. Is this all family? Yes. Who who lived, well, who all lived in that general area? Me, my family, Stephen, Chucky, my grandma, and grandpa. Who's Chucky? One of my uncles. Okay. So, it was all family that lived in that area. Yes. Was it adjacent to some property? A business? Yes. What business was that? The Avery Auto Salvage. Okay. Now, you said that Stephen, that's your uncle? Yes. And he lived where exactly in relation to your house? Next door. About how far is next door from your house? A few hundred, hundred, or two hundred, or three hundred yards away. Do you know yards or feet? Do you know the difference between the two? Not really. Okay. Was it further than a football field away from you? No. So less than a football field away from you? Yeah. Now, who else lived in that house with you and your mom? Me, my brother, my mom. You said your brother or brothers? All three of them. Okay. And who who are they? What are their names? Bobby, Brian, and Blaine. So your mom and the four brothers all live there? Yes. And how old is Blaine? Ten months older than me. In, rela- in the house, in relation to where you sleep, where did he sleep? In the same room. You guys shared a room? Yes. How about Bobby? How old is Bobby? Three years older. And did he also have a bedroom? Yes. Did he share with anyone? No. And and you said Brian also lived there. Yes. And, and where did he... Uh, how old is Brian? Four years young, older. So you're the youngest? Yes. October, on October 31st, 2005, were you attending school? Yes. And where did you go? Mishkat High School? What grade level were you in at the time? Yes. Tenth. Now, do you know the difference between mainstream and non-mainstream classes is? Yes. Okay. Were you in mainstream classes or non-mainstream? In both. Okay. So a little, are some of them non-mainstream? Yeah. It's also... It's also sometimes referred to as special education class. Yes. Okay. What kind of grades did you receive when you were in school? Usually C's, D's, and F's. Did you belong to any clubs at school? No. Any extracurricular activities at school? No. Did you work while you were going to school? Can you repeat that? Did you work while you were going to school? No. So after school, What would you normally do? Usually play video games. Where at? At home. So on October 31st, 2005, was it a normal day for you? Yes. And by normal, about what time would you get home? Get home from the school bus? 3.45. And you did on that day as well? Yes. Was anyone else with you on the bus that day? Just Blaine. Is that normal? You and Blaine take the bus together? Yes. Where does it drop you off at? Uh, um, does it drop you off at your house? No. Where does it drop you off? By our mailboxes. Okay. About how far away is that from your house? About a quarter of a mile. How long does it take you to get from where the bus drops you off to get to your house? Well, if you walk, it takes five minutes. But if you run, it probably takes two.
Do you normally run home from the bus? Sometimes. On October 31st, 2005, did you run or walk home? I don't recall. Now, did you go directly from home from getting off the bus that day? Yes. Did you see anyone where you're walking when you were walking down the bus down to from the bus stop to your house? No. Other than Blaine, right? Yes. What did you do when you got home that day? I played video games. Do you know what Blaine was doing? He was on the phone. Was that something you talked about beforehand? Yes. Why? Why would that topic of conversation come up while you were walking from the bus stop? Because Blaine wanted to use the phone and I wanted to go on the computer. Did you have one connection in the house? Yes. So if someone's on the phone, you can't be on the computer? Yes. Do you know why Blaine needed to use the phone? To call his friend. Do you know why? To go to see if he was going trick-or-treating. So something you guys talked about? Yes. You didn't go. Want to go trick-or-treating that night? I was deciding if I wanted to. So, now, you were at home playing video games. You said this is normal for you. Yes. Do you remember what video game you were playing? I believe it was American Chopper. How do you recall or how, why do you think that was the game you were playing? Because some of the games that we have are now too new. Okay, so that was not a new game at the time? No. How long were you playing video games after you got off the bus at 3.45? About two hours. What did you do after you were done playing video games? I ate some food. Okay, did you make it yourself? Yes. Where did you go to make food for yourself? In the kitchen. How far from your bedroom is that? 20 feet. Do you know what time it was when you went to make food for yourself? Around 5 o'clock. How do you know it was around 5 when you went to the kitchen? Because I looked on the, the oven for the time. Okay, was anyone else in the kitchen at that time? Not that I recall. Any time when you were eating? Just Blaine. Okay, and, and what was Blaine doing? He was in the kitchen holding his duffel bag. Was he going somewhere? Yeah. Where was he going? Trick-or-treating. And this is the same person he talked to on the phone? Yes. This is with the same person he talked to on the phone. Yes. Do you remember what time he left? Around 5.20. So when you say you thought it was 5 o'clock, it was certainly some time before Blaine left? Yes. Was anyone else home at that time? Just my mom. And, and, do, and do you know when? The time that your mom got home? Around 5. Did you see her come home? No. How do you know it was around 5? Because usually she keeps her door shut for her bed to her bedroom. Okay, but how do you know then it was around 5 when she got home? She usually comes home from work at that time. There is no reason for you to, well, strike that. The, um, so she normally comes home at 5? Yes. Did you speak with her at all But after or while you were eating supper? No. Okay, what did you do after you are done eating? I went into my mom's room and talked to her about that she was, I asked her, or she told me that she was going with Scott to the hospital to see his mom. And who's Scott? My mom's fiance. Did you know ahead of time that that might be something she might be doing that evening? No. Okay. Did you just learn this was the first time you heard of it? Yes. Did you see her leave? Yes. Do you know what time that was? Around 530. And was that before or after Blaine left? After. Was it shortly after or a long time after Blaine left? Shortly. So is that why you think it was 5.30? Yeah. Well, um, when your mom left, did she? Did you see if she drove off in her car? No. Did you see how she left? How she left to go up to Green Bay? Yeah. And, and how did that happen? She got into Scott's truck and they left. 
So you saw Scott's truck out there? Yes. Now, did you see Scott? No. So you're assuming he was driving? Yeah. Okay. During that time you and Blaine had been home after getting off the bus at 345, did you ever leave the house? Can you repeat that? After you and Blaine got off the bus at 345 and before your mom left, excuse me, did you leave the house? No. Did you ever see Blaine leave the house? Just at 5 or around 520. So when he left to go meet his friend, was the first time you saw him leave? Yes. What did you do? Well, first of all, is anyone left at the house now after your mom leaves? No. Do you know where Bobby is? No. Did you go in his room to check and see if he was there? No. What did you do after your mom left at 5.30? Watch TV. And where do you watch? Do you watch TV in your room? In the living room. Do you know how long you watch TV? Uh, Tell around 6 o'clock when I got a phone call. Who called? Mike Cornley. Who's Mike Cornley? Blaine's boss. Do you recognize his voice when he calls? Yes. Do you know Mike? Yes. Why? How do you know Mike? I used to work for him. Did he call for you? No. Who did he call for? For Blaine. Did you talk to him for very long? No. And how long did you talk to Mike? Five to ten minutes. Do you know for certain it was six o'clock or around six o'clock he called? Yeah. And how do you know that for certain? Because he called after my mom left. So sometime after 5.30 he called? Yes. Okay. And you watched TV for a while before he called? Yes. So you're just making a... Would it be fair to say you're just kind of estimating what time he called? Attorney Fallon. Objection. Objection. Leading. The witness. Yes. Attorney Fallon. At this point, I'd ask for one more question for a more question and answer format. The court. I think these are fair questions. Go ahead. Did you receive, back to testimony, did you receive any other calls after Mike Cornley called at 6 o'clock? No. What did you do after you got off the phone with Mike? I watched TV. And how long did you watch TV after you got off the phone with Mike? Until I got another phone call at around 7. Okay. Who called you around 7? Stephen. Who's Stephen? My uncle. Is it? That Stephen Avery? Yeah. Okay. And the one who lives near next door? Yeah. What did Stephen call you about? He asked me if I wanted to come over to the bonfire. Now, did you look out the window and see if there was a bonfire? No. What did you say to Stephen? That I would be over in a little bit. So what did you do? Did you have the phone then? Yeah. What did you do then? I changed my clothes out of my school clothes. Why did you get changed? Because usually I don't like, uh, I wear different clothes when I go out. Well, I was wearing shorts and a short sleeve that day. What was the weather like that night? Cold. So what did you change into? Pants and uh, a shirt. What, What kind of pants? Jeans. Now, you've been obviously sitting through this trial. There was a pair of jeans, I believe it's Exhibit 58. Do you recall seeing that? Yes. Those were the jeans you were wearing? Yes. Okay. So, did you go right over to your uncle's then after you got off the phone? No. What did you do? I changed into that clothes, and then he called again ten about 10 minutes later. Why? Why did he call again? To see if I'd change my mind. What did you say? That I was on my way. So what did you do next, Brendan? I walked over there. Over where? Over by Stephen. Where exactly did you go over when you left your house at 7.30? At, at around 7-ish. To the fire pit. To a fire pit? Yeah. Okay. Where's the fire pit located at Stephen's house? Behind his garage. Did you see the fire going? Yes. Could you describe what it looked like? It was two feet high. Have you seen fires back there before? 
Yes. How often have you seen fires? Do you know? Not that I recall. More than once? Yes. Okay. Did it look like it was a normal size fire? Yes. Did you see anything on the fire? Just some tires and some branches. So, about how close did you get to the fire? 10, 15 feet. Where was Stephen when you got to the fire? Standing like by the golf cart? Okay. And where was the golf cart by the fire? About 15 feet away from it. All right. What did you do when you got down to the fire? I asked him what we were going to do, and he told me that he wanted to pick up the yard, and we drove around in the golf cart and picked up stuff. Okay, what kind of stuff did you pick up? Wood, tires, an old cabinet, and a van seat. Now, is this stuff that's just lying around your yard? Yes. And and by, I guess what, to clarify, was it your yard or Stephen's yard? Both. Now, we go back to the wood. Do you recall where the wood was on the yard? Where was it? All over. Why do do you know why there is wood all over your yard? Because it was uh, leftovers from building our garage. Leftovers from building our garage. What what kind of wood? Timber, whatever. Timber? Would you use to frame a garage? You mean? Yeah. Okay. You said an old cabinet? Yeah. Where was that? Maybe a hundred feet away from the our garage and some old tires you said? Yes. Okay. Where were the tires when you when you found them? In the same place as the cabinet. Okay. I'm sorry. Did you mention a van seat too? Yes. Okay. Where was that? on the side of our garage. Do you know why it was there? Just that Stephen got it for, because we couldn't find one of the seats for the van. The van, meaning the maroon van, that was out in the front of your house? Yes. Okay, what did you do with the items as you collected them? We put them in the golf, the back of the golf cart. And what did you do with them after that? When the back of the golf cart got full, we drove it to the fire. Did you throw them on the fire? Some of it. What did you do with the rest? Piled it or planted it. Piled it right by the fire. How many trips did you take in the golf cart collecting debris from your yard? Around four. And how long did it take you to do that? Collect the debris from your yard? Around 45 minutes. And after that, what did you do? Went into the garage. He, Stephen, asked me to help him clean something up in the floor. Oh, okay. Now, have you been in the garage before? Yes. Have you worked with Stephen before in the garage? Yes. Was it unusual for him to ask you to help you clean something out in the garage? Not really. What did that? Uh, you said it, something to clean up. What did the, what was the something, do you know? No. What did it look like? Looked like some fuel, fluid from a car. Okay, well, let me ask you, was it a large spill? About three feet by three feet? And did you do pour gasoline on it? No. So you were, what, what did you do? If you weren't pouring the gasoline, what were you doing to help clean it up? I was looking through the bag to find stuff to clean it up with. Bag of what? Bag of clothes. And did you clean it up with the, something from the bag of old clothes? Yes. Okay. And as you did that, what did you do with the rags? Did you just wash them out? What do you mean? When you cleaned up with the old clothes. What did you do with them as they got dirty? We picked them up and we threw them on the fire. Okay, now when you said that you used three items to try to clean up the mess on the floor. Yes. And did you ever pour anything on on the mess? No. 
Okay. What was what was the second item that Stephen used? Paint thinner. And did that clean up the mess? A little bit. Same thing. You 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 used rags then to clean up? Yes. How would you how would you do that? Would you get down on your hands and knees? Can you explain to me how you did that? We would just throw it on the floor and we used our feet. And then you would do what with them? Move them around. And then after they, what did you do with them after they were dirty? Pick them up and threw them on the fire. And how did you pick them up? With their fingers. The the bleach was that was that last? Yeah. Where did Stephen get the bleach? From the house. Did you go in with him? No. Did you ever go in the house that night? Not that I recall. His house? No. Do you know where Stephen keeps his bleach? Usually in the bathroom. And how do you know that? Because I was in the bathroom a few times and I seen it. Can you estimate in the past how many times you've been in the bathroom? 20 to 25. So you're familiar with this house a little bit. Yes. Did you ever ask Stephen what it was that was on the floor? No. Now, do you recall, or do you recall at some point from February 27 or on 2006 speaking to investigators Weigert and Fassbender? Yes. And, and you do recognize them, right? Yeah. They're in court. They're here in court. Yes. Okay. And and you spoke to them a couple of times. Yes. Did you tell them what you saw on the floor? Yes. What did you tell them? That it could have been blood. What did you tell them the first time they asked what it was on the floor? I can't remember. How long did it take you to clean up what was on the floor? Fifteen minutes. Now, did anything happen to your clothes cleaning up the, the mess on the floor? Not that I noticed right away. What did you notice later? That there was bleach stains on them? Bleach on, on what? The pants? Okay. Did you ever wear those pants again? Not that I remember. What did you do with them? I washed them that night and just put them in my dresser. So, after you finished cleaning up, you said it took about 15 minutes? Yes. What did you do then? We went back outside and we put some of the, more of the stuff that we picked up from the yard. How close to the fire did you get when you were throwing more stuff onto it? About five feet. Did you, yourself, get any phone calls when you were out there? Not that I talked to. Did that? So someone call you? My mom called Stephen. But you didn't talk to her? No. Do you know what time that was? Not that I recall. Did he tell you what she said to to him? Yeah. Was Stephen outside with you the whole time watching the fire? Yes. Other than going in to get the bleach, did he ever go inside? No. So now you're watching the fire for a while, right? Yes. What are you doing? I only can recall that Stephen was talking to me about a phone call that he got from Joey. Okay, you recall any other conversations you had? Not that I recall. Did you, but you were talking? Yes. Do you know how long you were out there waiting, or, excuse me, talking and watching the fire? No. About what time did you go home? Around 10. Do you recall, and again, I... Maybe I asked you this. I'm sorry. Did I asked you what time you received the phone call from your mom? Yeah. Did you know what time that was? No. Okay. When you got home, was anyone else home? Not that I recall. Did you see any brothers? No. Did you talk to your mom at all? Yeah. When was that? About 1030. Was she home then? No. How did you talk to her? She called on the house phone. What were you doing when she called? Sitting on the couch. What time did you go to bed? After I got done talking to my mom. Now, following October 31st, 2005, did you lose any weight? Yes. 
How much did you lose? Five, ten pounds. Were you doing this on purpose? Is it? No. You weren't trying to lose weight? Well, I was trying to. Okay. Why were you trying to lose weight? Because people were calling me fat because I thought that my first girlfriend broke up with me with me because of my weight. You mean first ever or, yeah, prior to October or, well, let me ask. Actually, asked you this way. Have you ever seen Teresa Hallback before? No. Now, you, you obviously know that name, correct? Yes. When was the first time that you recall hearing the name or seeing her picture? When she was reported missing. When was that? Do you recall? Not that I remember. And how did you come about hearing about her being missing? On that day, my mom called and she told me to turn on the news. So you watch TV? Yes. Now, at some point, your Uncle Stephen is arrested, correct? Yes. Did you watch any TV accounts about that? Not that I remember. Did you ever see Teresa Hallback alive on October 31st, 2005? No. Did you ever see her body that night? No. Now, when you spoke with investigators Weiger and investigator Fossbender, correct? Yes. And you were in court for the video as well, correct? Yes. Obviously, that's you on the video, right? Yes. Do you realize how serious this charge is? Yes. Why did you tell those two investigators that you participated in killing and, and raping Teresa Hallback? I don't know. You have no idea why you would say that? No. Okay, Brendan. I want to talk about that video for a little bit with you, okay? Okay. You you know it was being videotaped that day. Yes. And and the officers explained to you your rights. Is that right? Yes. Did you understand them? Yes. When they you first talked to officers about Teresa Hobbett, did you immediately tell them that you had you were there and participated in raping and killing and killing and raping her? No. In your mind, Brenda, do you feel as if there were promises made to you by the officers? Sort of. What do you mean by that? That if I told the truth, that I wouldn't go away for life. Did you tell the truth? No. What other promises do you think, in your mind, what other promises were made to you? That's all I recall. There are times that they wanted to talk to you about a gun, right? Yes. And did you ever admit to using the gun? No. Why didn't you admit to that? Because I don't like guns. Was that different than a, when you admitted to what you're saying you didn't do? Yes. Why is that? Why do you believe that's different? I don't know. Were you being um, questioned by the officer, the two investigators? Did they ever tell you that they were telling you the truth about things? Did I feel like that? No, did they? Did they tell you that? No. Did they ever say they were lying about anything? Did I say I was lying? No. Did they say they were lying to you? No. You don't know what they were telling you was true or not, correct? Object. Attorney Fallon, objection, leading at this point. The court. Under 906.113, some leading questions are permissible, mainly foundational questions. We're now getting into some evidentiary areas, so I'm going to sustain the objection. Back to testimony. That's fine. I was sense, sense especially using that to try to lead up to this question, which will be a little more open-ended. If you didn't know that they're lying to you or telling you the truth, Brendan, why did you answer the questions to them the way you did? I don't know. Do you have any explanation for admitting to this? No. How many times did you talk to officers before March 1st? Twice. And when, and when did those two times occur? In November 2005. 
How many times in November? Twice. Okay, what about any time between November 2005 and March 2006? To March? Between those dates, did you talk to the investigators? Officers, investigators Weiger and Fassbender? Yes. And how many times did you talk to them between those two dates? Once in February and, or there's three times, on February 27 and one on February or March 1st. So where, where were the three times in February? Where did those occur? One at school, one in Two Rivers, and one, I believe, it was the fire department in Mishika. What happened after they spoke to you on February 27? Did they arrest you? No. What happened to you? Where did you go? They put us up in Fox Hills Resort. Okay, how, how, how long were you up there? We only stayed up there for that night. Which night? What's the date of that? February 7, 27. So where did you go on February 28? Home. Where did you sleep on February 28? At home. Where did you go on March 1st? Went to school. And after that? The investigators talked to me and brought me to, first they brought me to my house to get the pants, and then they brought me to Manitowoc. The attorney to the court, I have nothing else, Judge. The court, cross. Attorney Fallon, yes, thank you.